walk us through the process of um, data exploration. So let me just share my screen. So are you able to see my screen? Thank you. So today we want to have a look at data exploration and um, it is important for us to, after understanding the data set that we have been given, uh, after doing for it the cleaning and we have also transformed our data and extracted, so it is important for us to get to, um, do, to do an exploration of the data set that we have been given, we have been given. So in the exploration of the data, one of the things that uh, you have to understand is uh, you will have to get uh, a clear understanding or insights of the data that you have been given. This will help you in extracting features that are going to help you in uh, the analysis that you um, are to do or in creating of the models that you want to create with the data set that you have been given. So in every data science project, it is important for one to do a data exploration so that you can have a clear grasp or understanding of the data set that you have. So let's kick straight in and um, have a look at this notebook. Uh, I will take us through so that you get to understand um, the data ex exploration. So data exploration or the uh, most of the time it is called the EDA, the exploratory data analysis is the approach of analyzing data sets so that you can be able to summarize their main characteristics uh, and these ones include detecting of mistakes uh, that could be in your data set, uh, detecting outliers and also abnormalities that could arise when um, that could be in the data set that you have been given. Another thing it's also it helps you to uh, determine the relationship between um, the relationship among the exploratory variables. So when we're doing the data preparation, um, uh, when we were doing the cleaning, the transformation and um, the extraction, we saw that we are able to actually have a look at uh, the different columns that are contained in a data set. So when you're doing your exploratory analysis, you are able also to determine the relationship that um, these variables that are present in your data set um, actually have, the relationship that they have with each other. Um, another thing, it also helps in assessing also, assessing the relationship between uh, the exploratory and the outcome uh, variables. Um, so from our notebook here, we, um, we already have the, uh, the clean, data frame. Uh, so this is a copy of it. We, we're just giving to um, this variable. Uh, we are naming it the F EXP. So we are having a look at um, uh, the data set that we, we already, um, we, 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 are, we have already cleaned and we can have a, a look and see um, the columns that are contained in that data set and also the number of rows that it has. Uh, so um, we can also look at and find um, the different data types that we have in, um, in the data set that uh, we already have right here now. Um, then after that, now we want to look at the univariate analysis of, um, of, our, of our data. We want to do some univariate analysis. So this is mainly um, analysis which is done on particular variables uh, only. Like if you are, um, you want to, you're doing a univariate analysis, that means that you only pick uh, a given variable and uh, you are trying to um, make analysis of, the, of only that given vari variable without the relationship of the other variables that uh, we have in the data set. So we search for the data and the characteristics of the variable with um, um, 
in regards to uh, with the disregard to the other the other columns that we we, we have in in that given data set. Um, so here we can be able to look at the distribution of that given uh, or that particular variable that we are looking at. So um, so here we can we can we can see um, we can be able to plot the histogram. Uh, plot the histogram so that we can be able to see um, this variable of um, uh, the number of lab procedures. The data set that you're having is for um, a diabetes data set. So uh, the number of lab procedures, uh, we, are, we are plotting uh, the histogram of, of it so that we can be able to make analysis of, um, um, of this, of the distribution that uh, we have. So from this distribution, we can be able to uh, make analysis of it as we as we can see um, here. And uh, we, uh, by this visualization, we can also be able to understand the type of distribution that this particular variable um, has got. Um, so here also, again, here we are also plotting the histogram of, of the number of medications. Uh, and we are giving it with also a different color. So this one is just to give it a different color. So this is just the distribution of um, the number of medications that uh, are there in um, the data set that we were provided with. Uh, so uh, we can be able to make also some conclusions or analysis from this kind of uh, distribution that we are able to, to plot here. Um, another thing we can also um, describe, um, we can describe uh, the particular variables that we have, like for example, number of medication. We can give a description of it, how many counts do we have, what is the mean, the standard deviation, uh, the minimum, um, uh, the 25th percentile, the 50th, uh, 75th percentile, um the maximum um and things like that so we can be able to um make analysis too so that we are able to know that variable that uh we we are given or we want to understand more about it um next let's also try to um uh, look at how can we be able to uh plot outliers uh from um when we are exploring our data so we can be able to plot the uh, outliers using the box plot. Um, plot box, and then we give um, the variable that we want to find its, uh, we give the variable that you want to find its, um, um, its plots, or we want to find its outliers. So from here, we can be able to see um, uh, the box plot that is generated when we run this line, uh, and we can be able to see what um, are um, the outliers that we have in this given data set. Um, next, also, we can be able to plot um, uh, a box plot for um, the number of lab procedures that we had in this data set, and we can be able to see. Um, when you're doing this box plot also, uh, we can be able to see that uh, uh, we can we can be able to um, analyze and get to a conclusion that most of the data set that we have is concentrated on a given uh, area, but a few of them uh, go past or they be, uh, the ones that go overboard, the ones that we now call the outliers of um, that uh, data in that given uh, variable that we are exploring. Um, you can also be able to explore the number of medications, see the outliers that are produced in this one as well. Um, then we um, we can be able to fix the outliers that uh, we have. Um, someone asked yesterday, how do we deal with the outliers? If suppose there are outliers in the data set that we have been given. So we are, if you can see that 
um, the variable that we are exploring has got um, outliers, then we are able to uh, fix uh, the outliers of that um, variable that we are exploring in that given data set. Um, next, we can also plot, um, we can have a box plot for it. And this, this is just for after, after you have uh, fixed the outliers, again, we can just have a look and see that right now at this, um, uh, this variable, we do not have outliers in, um, in, the, in, in this given variable or the data points that this variable has. So there are no um, outliers. So we are, we are able to fix the outliers in, in, that given, in this given variable. Um, next, we can also plot the histograms. Um, by this, we are still just uh, trying to understand or to do a univariate analysis of the, um, the, uh, the different variables that we have. So here we can plot the histograms of um, the different variables that we have. And by plotting the histograms, we can be able to uh, explore or get an analysis of uh, of um, the, the variable that we are working with. So here we can be able to see the distribution of, um, of um, this fixed number of medications. Um, the, the one that we, uh, we have fixed uh, from when we, were, when we were looking at, when we were, uh, when we were fixing the, the outliers. So when we do the distribution, we can be able to see uh, this kind of distribution or the, um, this kind of histogram is generated when we are exploring this given um, this given variable. Uh, so with that also, we can be able to go ahead and describe um, that variable that we have fixed so that we can be able to know um, the changes that have been um, affected. So with that, we know that the mean is going to change, the standard deviation is going to change and things like that. So by this, we are able to see uh, the changes that um, have been made from um, this given um, variable that we, um, we are exploring. Uh, next, we have categorical variables. We can be able to uh, plot the count of the categorical uh, variables uh, like the race, you know, race is uh, categorical. Uh, we category, we categorize someone according to the race that they have. So here we can be able to plot the counts that are there in uh, the different um, in the different um, um, races. Uh, we are able to um, make the distribution and see the count of uh, the different races that we have. So from the data set that we've been given here, we can see that the, the leading in terms of the distribution is the Caucasian, then followed by the American, African-American, and then the other races, then we have uh, Hispa, no, and then we have the Asian. So with this, you are able to uh, get an exploration to just get an understanding that uh, maybe you could be asked that what, which race is, uh, is dominant in this data set that we have been given. So when we are doing, when we are exploring the data or getting to understand our data more, we are able to come up with these uh, conclusions so that we are able to know um, which one is the highest. Um, like for example, in, in, in the challenge that uh, we are having this week, um, when you'll be doing your exploration, you will get to realize that you have to make some different counts in uh, uh, the given, uh, um, variables that you'll be using, like for example, maybe in YouTube, uh, which, which which platform is leading, especially uh, in terms of the upload, or maybe the download, or in terms of the data that is being used, both upload and, and, and download, and you can be able to um, you can be able to to explore just to understand that is it YouTube that is leading, is it Google, is it uh, Facebook, the social media platforms. So it is important that um, as you try to uh, explore your data, you get um, um, you get to understand um, the distributions, especially of the different variables that you have 
or you have um, been given so that you are able to know uh, the types of distributions that you have and you're also able to make conclusions of the different uh, kinds of distributions in the variables that you have. Next, we have also the distribution here for, for the gender uh, and we can be able to see how the gender was distributed in this given data set. Uh, so we have the female and then we have the male here. Uh, well, of course, maybe those who didn't indicate or are, are known or invalid, we can see also their distribution on this part. So we are able to make uh, or to uh, get to um, understand um, the different distributions of the gender that we have in, um, in this data set that uh, we, we are given. So um, after getting to understand this univariate analysis of um, uh, our data set, now we can go ahead and do also um, multivariate analysis of um, uh, multivariate analysis of the data set that we have been given. Uh, multivariate analysis, um, it mainly it's done on two or more um, columns where we look at we look for um, for the relationships between those columns and how um, the data is distributed. Uh, among the values in, in, in the multiple columns that, that we have. Um, so uh, the first one we can do here, we can do the scatter plot so that we get to understand um, uh, the scatter plot for the given um, um, in comparisons to uh, maybe two or two um, variables that we're looking at. So like, for example, here we are trying to make a, a, a plot, a scatter plot uh for um, this given data set uh, and this um, uh, we are taking the x uh, to be the number of lab procedures and the y to be uh, the number of medications um, uh, and the q here is for um, uh, the race so we we are plotting um, the number of lab procedures against the against the, the, the number of um, medications that uh, we have, but we, the differences that, or the different plots that will be given will be dependent on the race that uh, uh, this, the given people have. So from here, we are able to see the, uh, this multivariate analysis of, um, of, of this data uh, or of these variables that we have, that is the number of lab procedures and the columns uh, and, uh, we are able to do this in. Uh, uh, we are able to do this in regards to the number of uh, the race that um, the clients uh, have. So from here, we we can be able to get a better understanding of how uh, these distributions are uh, in terms of the number of medications versus the the lab procedures that. Um, um, that this data set is, is representing. So um, from here again, we can also be able to, we can go ahead and do another um, scatter plot. Uh, now this one is for the time in which someone um, uh, spends in the hospital and then the number of lab procedures, the U is still the race. So we are able to see um, the number of lab procedures against the, the time that uh, uh, one is the time that one spends in, 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 in the hospital uh, and uh, we are able to make reference to um, the race that uh, someone has and you can be able to see you can be able to see um, the different um, races that are represented in each and every time frames that we have um, and also with the number of uh, uh, lab procedures that uh, they take. So it gives us, a, uh, it's also a good visualization that it gives us and we can get a, a better understanding from uh, this kind of plot that uh, we are making, especially in, in doing our, our exploration of this data. Next, we can also do uh, box plots. Um, we can do the box plot so that we are able to see um, um, the distributions in, in regards to um, this, this. This is in regards to uh, the 
races that these people have and the number of uh, medications that uh, they have. So you can see in this race, uh, uh, there's a huge concentration here, but there's also um, there's also these, um, uh, call it the outliers of uh, this given race. And we can also see the outliers of this given race in regards to um, uh, the number of medications that they have. We can be able to see uh, the outliers in this other, um, the other race. We can be able to see uh, the outliers in the Asian and also in the um, Hispanic. So this one gives you a better understanding, especially when you want to uh, get the outliers in the different uh, variables um, and in comparison to when you are when you are uh, you are uh, making your category to a given or a specific variable that you want to understand. So if you want to uh, understand, um, we want to in this one we are trying to understand uh, the number of medications that are given in this um, the number of medications that are given in in in, um, in the Caucasian race and we're able to see the outliers that um, it has and the other races that we have um, there. So um, after that also we can be able to uh, uh, do multiple um, multiple box plots um, so that we are able to see the one for female, uh, the number of medication or, or outliers in the race. Uh, uh, actually, this one should be not the race, but this one should be in the uh, gender. This one should be in the gender. So here we are trying to get to understand the number of medications that um, are given in, uh, in the given gender for female, for male and also for uh, the unknown. So here we, uh, from this plot, we are able to see uh, also the outliers that are there in the, uh, the female and the number of outliers that are there in, in the male. Um, after that, we can also be able to make pair plots. Uh, so the pair plots, uh, which are also known as the scatter plot matrix, they allow us to see both the distributions of single columns and the relationship between the two columns. Um, so uh, we, we are able to see, um, I'll just take us so that we are able to see um, this kind of um, uh, pair plots that we we have here. So in 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 the pair plots, we we are able to make comparisons of. Uh, uh, we are able to make um, comparisons of uh, uh, we are able to make plots in um, comparisons of the two or the given. Like here, we are trying to look at this this time in the hospital, um, and the first one will give us um, the time in hospital. That one takes. Um, and the levels that we also have on this other side, uh, the time in the hospital, the number of procedures, the number of lab procedures, the number of medications that one is given. And when we, when we plot this, we are able to come up with different um, matrix plots that uh, we can be able to uh, get to an understanding of um, the different variables, uh, the different pair variables that we have in in the data set that we uh, we are presented or we are given. Um, yeah, so um, that will be that in terms of you trying to explore your data and getting to understand um, what um, are um, what are the things that are needed in in your in, in your exploration. So it is important that um, as you do your exploration, you have what you want to achieve at the end of the day so that you focus on those kind of um, things that you want to achieve. Especially in this data set, we uh, can see that there are given variables that we focus on so that we are able to achieve 
um, our, our, our goal at the end of it. For example, the time that someone spends in the hospital, what is their race, what is their gender, um, uh, and things like that. So in the data set that you've been given, uh, it is important to know all the, the columns, that is the variables that are given in that data set, so that when you're doing your exploration of the data, you are able to focus on those key aspects that, um, um, that you will use, especially when you're going to do your feature extraction. Um, thereafter, the feature extraction, you will be able to go ahead and make um, predictions out of it and create models from, from it. So um, in actual, um, uh, this is what we are talking about in data exploration. Um, it is important that when you get your data, try to understand um, the data set that you have been given. Look at the columns um, uh, that you have or the different variables that you have in that uh, data set that you have been given. Uh, after looking at that, get to do your unit analysis of uh, the different columns that you have. And after doing that univariate analysis of the different columns that you have and getting to understand those different variables that are there in your in your data set, then you can go ahead and do the multivariate uh, analysis, trying to compare um, or to get an understanding of the relationship that is there between the different variables that you have in your in your data set. Um, so after doing that, you um, it's also, it's very important for you to make plots when you are doing when you're doing your your exploration of of the data one last thing that uh, maybe didn't mention yesterday but um, i think it is important is for you to uh, have something like utility functions that you can use um, in in your um, in your code so these utility functions, um, um, they are important um, I, and you can, they make your work easier uh, so that you get, you're just able to uh, call uh, one of them, call one function and you're able to produce. So in, our, um, in, in, this, um, um, in this data that we were given, after, after doing our data cleaning transformation and um, and uh, extraction, uh, we went ahead to create utilities, utility functions that you're going to use. So like for example, here we had a function that uh, uh, would give us the missing values table, uh, a function that would calculate um, uh, the missing values, would find the aggregation of um, the data, and then would convert the bits and to mega to will convert bits to megabits. Um, and then um, a function here to find or to fix the outliers. Yeah, to fix the outliers. And um, thereafter, we have also functions that uh, are going to help us here in our plotting um, of the different uh, graphs that we have seen. So a function to plot the histogram, to plot the counts, to plot the bar, uh, plot the heat map, we have not used heat map here, to plot the box, um, to plot um, multiple, um, multi box, uh, to plot uh, the scatter, the scatter plots for um, our data. Then that is when we went ahead to extract the data, after extracting the data, um, then we went ahead now to explore our our data set that um, we have been given. So I would love to um, stop at that and then I'm going to welcome questions um, so that we, we can see how we answer. So do we have someone with a question? We can raise our, your hand and then we uh, do you have someone with a question? Hello? Yes, Frank. 
Yeah, um, I have a question, but um, it's more of uh, data preparation. So it's about um, uh, filling in missing values and in, uh, in categorical variables. So <clears throat> um, instead of um, imputing missing value in a variable like um, ID or uh, any other user identification, wouldn't it make sense to drop those values if they are small, like in number? Because by uh, filling in, you are actually creating a user who does not exist. OK, OK. So thank you for that question. So um, yesterday, as you we were talking about uh, fixing of uh, missing values, um one thing that i said is that uh, it is important for you to understand uh, especially when you want to drop a missing value um you have some missing value in a given um in a given um uh, variable that you're exploring or in a given variable that you're presented with and you want to prefer to uh to drop it uh it is important that you have an understanding of why, why do you want to uh, drop it? Or it's important for you to get to understand uh, or give reason why you, uh, you choose to drop it. Sometimes you, uh, I cannot give you a definite answer that you just drop it because uh, at some point you will realize that that given data set that, uh, or that given variable that is missing, it is important for you to, uh, to have it, especially if you're going to do your, your modeling or creating a model um, in, in that um, project that you're doing um, and uh, you wouldn't love that um, uh, your model would be uh, a model that is not functioning well or you uh, want to ensure that that given variable is present so at that point maybe you will not um, not you just drop it for uh, just the sake that it uh, it has some missing values, so you just drop it at the end of it. So it is important for you to understand first of all that um, why is it that um, why is it that I want to drop this given um, uh, given um, variable um, or given column uh, that we have. So I cannot give you a definite answer that you drop this one or you don't drop this one. So like for example, in, in yesterday we saw that we also saw that. Um, um, we were dropping some of the variables that we had uh, that were 30%, had 30% uh, and above of the missing uh, values. So over 30% of the missing values, we, we were dropping um, those given variables. So um, it is important for you to understand why do you want to drop it? Um, that's the answer that I could give. Um, can I have um, a follow-up question? Yes. Yeah, so for example, um, if, if I can be specific, like with our case now, like the question we are working on, let's say, for example, uh, uh, this variable I, I am E I, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, a unique address that is assigned on a device, um, like by manufacturer. So by filling in maybe the most frequent device, that's mod or average if you consider it as um, an integer or a number then you are creating a new device so to me it doesn't sound right um, so those are like variables i'm having hard times um, imputing and i think it can have a, a, a great impact on um, analysis rather than, because for example, if you have like um, 150,000 um, data, uh, like rows, and you're going to drop only 500 rows. So in your analysis, you're going to use um, one, 100, 145,000. Um, I think that would be more accurate analysis than uh, someone who used, um, new uh, 500 data with incorrect um, IMEI data. 
Musa, Musa, you have something. Yeah, um, I just want to say, so the way you impute, you must ask yourself uh, if there's a null value in this field, does it make sense, right? Uh, you're talking about um, IMAI, right? Like you, you are rightly explaining, it doesn't make sense to come up with a new uh, device ID, right? Which doesn't exist because it has to exist somewhere, right? So it really depends on does it make business sense, right? If it doesn't make business sense or if it doesn't make sense in the context of the data that you have, then don't impute it. Um, either remove it or come up with some other means. But, you know, if you're going to take um, an average or a maximum, or if you're going to, you know, use a mode or whatever, like you have to ask yourself, does it make sense in this context? You know, if it, it wouldn't make sense, then, you know, it means you shouldn't be doing that. You shouldn't be imputing like that. You should either uh, drop it, uh, you know, or, yeah, um, in, in, in other cases, you find that maybe you have access to whoever created the data set or, you know, a subject matter expert. You can ask them to say, you know, if you have this situation, what would you do? But if you're going to impute, it must make sense that that, that value that you're putting in uh, makes sense in that context. If it doesn't make sense, then you shouldn't do it. Um, yeah, thanks, Desmond and Musa. Okay, thank you. Do, do we have someone else with with um, a question? I'm not able to see any hand reason. Yes, Amal. Okay, my question is also regarding the missing values. Um, uh, in the data uh, many variables that have only one missing value. So, how do we how do we use the mean or the median, uh, considering there are many of them? Do we put it in one code? Or is there an if statement that we use? I didn't get the last part of your question. Maybe you can just come up again, please. Um, so we have many variables that have one value missing. How do we use the median mean imputation? to to add to to predict the the value uh, considering the number of variables that have only one missing value do we write each variable in the line of code or is there a simpler way to do it okay so um i think we we um if you follow through the tutorial of yesterday you are able to see how we can um, be able to uh, fill in or uh, fix um, the, 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 the values that are missing in given uh, uh, data points that uh, we have. So yeah, you uh, you don't, uh, you just write a code, there's a code that you can write so that it fills in, when you run the code, it fills in for you those missing data. You can decide to maybe um, fill using the mean, you can fill using the mode, um, you can fill using the forward fill or the backward fill. Um, so, um, yeah, I'd encourage you, Amal, that maybe you can go through um, um, the tutorial of yesterday again and then have a look at it, uh, how we were able to, um, uh, able to see how we can forward fill, backward fill, or fill using the median or the mode. Okay, you, you you did mention that, but uh, considering that there are many many missing values in different columns, so per column, how how do you handle that? Um, to handle them in the given columns. 
Yes. Um, yes, you, you, you will just specify, uh, you will have to, you will have to write the each and every column that you uh, are feeling for. And uh, what if it's a big data set? Um, if it is a big data set, um, you can still find your way through, uh, maybe you can uh use the loop through so that you can be able to just um go through each and every column that is there in the given um in the given data set that you have oh all right okay yeah. we have someone else with a question Oh, yes, Musa. Well, there, there are questions on the chat. Um, so maybe you can check those. Uh, so the first one is asking, um, is there a minimum requirement for uh, a requ minimum requirement percentage for columns uh, missed uh, values to drop? So I'm thinking in that column, what's the percentage of, of um, uh, missing values that can be, that can allow you to drop uh, those values. Uh, okay, uh, so um, th there's no minimum requirement that um, is uh, given for you to drop um, a certain column or so. Uh, so uh, what I will, I will still come back to is to um, uh, is to tell you that you have to understand that um, if uh, perhaps I want more than 30% or less than 30% of the missing data so that I can consider this given variable or given the, uh, or uh, this given column. Um, it all depends on you. And that is why yesterday we say that um, you have to get an understanding and give also your reason uh, for you dropping a particular given column. So it is up to you to decide that I will be working with if perhaps 50% of this data uh, of this column has got missing values, then I will drop it or maybe 30% or maybe 20%. Um, it depends with, um, uh, I think, I would say maybe uh, the criticality of that um, given variable in terms of whatever you want to achieve with the given data set that you have. So, uh, for example, if you're looking at um, the data set that we are using for this tutorial is the one for diabetes and uh, we gave a reason that uh, for any column that we have uh, and um, uh, we are having more than 30 percent of the data set that uh, we um, more than 30 percent um, of missing data in um, the column in each column that we are looking at we decided to drop so it is. There is no minimum requirement for for you to uh, uh, to drop uh, a certain column, uh, but you have to get the understanding and explain why you have decided to drop uh, that given column. Um, you question Kevin. Regarding filling uh, none with either mean or fad fill, do we have to check the skewness of each column containing um, the non values? Um, so it is um, it is important for you to uh, check uh, the skewness because sometimes you will realize that tending towards uh, uh, a certain um, tending towards um, uh, when, you, when you look at you, you you're, you'll be able to see that maybe the data set is maybe skewed towards uh, maybe the right and say that towards the right uh, is where you have a lot of um, the non-values. So, um, yeah, it is important that you check, first of all, so that uh, maybe you do not repeat um, doing the forward fill with only uh, non-values. So 
yeah, it's important for you to, to check first. So do, do we have another question? So it, um, um, maybe Kevin, I cannot understand uh, your, your last, your last question when we use forward fill or backward fill. <coughs> so maybe you can, can speak. You, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, like, I just want to know where we can use like forward fill or back fill, like, when do we use forward field and when do we use back field? Okay, Musa. Um, Kevin, I think that's mostly, um, uh, it's mostly for time series data, right? Uh, so for example, if, if you are um, looking at weather data, right? Uh, the temperature today is 26, uh, the temperature tomorrow, you don't have it. Uh, the temperature up so you, you're missing one day or three days right then you can you can make an assumption that you know between two days the temperature hasn't changed much right so that's that's a that's a reasonable assumption to make right uh or in stock data right uh you've got the stock price of cheetah today uh you've got the stock price of cheetah two days later right then you know you can say you want to take the one later or the one before it really depends on what makes the most sense for you um so the assumption with 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 time series data is that you know the the differences between like the fluctuations are not that large. i mean we, we do we do have instances where you know like if you're looking at bitcoin and whatever uh then you know today you know the price drops by 50 percent and, and whatever but in most other cases, uh, for forward filling and back filling, uh, it's usually with time series data where the assumption is that there is little volatility or uh, slight changes that it would make sense. If you don't have a value uh, that wasn't uh, collected, uh, maybe you know with with a sensors or whatever because of whatever interference that was there, you can assume that you know yesterday's value is probably still valid today or tomorrow's value would be valid the, the previous day so in, in those instances that's when you can use uh forward field and back field thank you thank you for that i hope that answers your question um kevin yeah it does it does okay so do we have anyone else with the uh, uh, questions before we can wrap up this. Okay, so it looks like there is no one else with a question. Um, maybe we can close at that point and then we can continue with the um, uh, chat in Slack, and um, we uh, we can um, yeah we can meet tomorrow. Um, so let's continue with the chat in Slack, even as we uh, go through the challenge. Um, I wish you all the best. So maybe we can stop at that point. Have a nice time, everyone.